This video is about the latest softwood lumber and panel commodity price update for the beginning of April 2024. Hello again, everyone. Kata Kostman, publisher of Madison's Lumber Reporter. Here I am now. We are into April. We've had Easter, which is a big holiday in Canada and often marks a turning point or uh, potentially start up of the spring building season and increase in lumber demand, potentially prices and hopefully uh, sales volumes. We did not have that. So in fact, uh, last week, uh, just at the end of the first week of April, we had to print down on some prices. The benchmark that I talk about a lot, the Western Spruce uh, 2x4, did manage to hold. And so it's still even at US $452 per thousand board feet, as it has been for a couple of months, and uh, pretty even, uh, even since the beginning of this year. Southern Pine prices dropped. They pushed up a little bit more than the market could bear a month or two ago, and are now correcting down. So... That doesn't bode entirely well for what we would be expecting already now, increase in demand uh, for building projects coming online in spring. It doesn't mean that there will not be a bump, but that things are still so flat at this time of year does suggest that there won't be you know, a big uplift in housing construction. We have had years like this in the past where, you know, oddly, it kind of felt like the archer was pulling back on the bow, not releasing, just because it feels like there should be an uptick in demand and construction uh, now into, you know, as May comes on and really uh, spring and summer, summer weather, doesn't mean it actually will. There have been times where there was literally six weeks bump in housing. The wood that uh, folks had ordered, you know, sort of February till now, April, was enough for what they were doing. And there really was not any big sales. So it's too early to say exactly right now because there still was uh, some onset of winter weather across the continent and other you know storms and things like that and the customers are really quite reluctant to jump in so ever since the uh, mortgage rate increases happened in the middle of 2022 the buyers have been very very cautious and are not stocking on inventory a lot of times, given the seasonality, like uh, when things slow down in Labor Day, as I always say, and then really come to a halt by U.S. Thanksgiving and pick up again, you know, February, and then the actual building, you know, April, May, June. Normally, when that seasonality was in play and uh, other things were a little bit more predictable, like employment, interest rates, housing starts, all that kind of stuff, there would be an obvious increase in lumber buying and people would be stocking inventory. They'd stock up on inventory so they have wood. They wouldn't need to respond to if there were any price shocks. And they weren't particularly concerned about being caught with more expensive wood that they could not sell at that price later or having that wood that they paid a lot for and then watching the price drop, you know, let's say July or August. So that could come back to bite them if there is an increase in building. And don't forget, it's not just new housing starts, which is of course by far the largest, US housing is by far the largest consumer of North America construction framing lumber, but it's also remodeling and rebuilding if there's storms, if there's uh, weather impacting, re-roofing, definitely has an effect on plywood. So right now, it's really very steady. And we can't say if there will be that seasonal boost, even if it's short-lived. 
it might just stay steady and flat like it did last year. 2023 was very, very even. And those of you who watch me often or read the website, will see where we put the story of how 2023 price trend line was very similar to 2019. So anyone who's looking for how can I make an assessment of the future by looking at something similar in the past, which of course we ignore all that time, 2020 to 2022, when the reasons for the price, uh, huge price increases and unprecedented price levels, never expected to reach that again, uh, but also never expected to reach the lows that we had from 2006 to 2016. Very difficult to know. So people should uh, check back with Madison's regularly, subscribe to the newsletter, subscribe to the dashboard. If you click here in the caption, you will see a link that you can fill out a form and we'll send you a sample, we'll send you an invoice. But for right now, let's look at some of the graphs and get into a little bit of the detail. And I'm going to be doing a video next on the comparison of those three, the benchmark, Western Spruce Pine Fir, Eastern Spruce Pine Fir, and Southern Yellow Pine on the east side, two by four prices. What have they been doing for the past couple of years in relation to each other? Because they all meet the building code and they are all applicable and the customers really make their preference by, you know, what is it that they want for their projects and which region are they in? Because the prices that we print are FOB mill, our mill gate. So when you see the prices that Madison's quotes, that is just the wood, okay? And does not include delivery, does not include freight, does not include commission, does not include duty, doesn't include anything. It's US dollars per thousand board feet. And that's the price of the wood, whether someone is, you know, literally next door to the mill or all the way across the continent. Okay. So here's some graphs and some tables, and then I'll come back and just close up a little bit more. And so here we have the latest data for that Western Spruce Pine for KD two by four, number two and better price for the uh, first week of April. The blue line is this year looking incredibly flat. Uh, in short order there, the high volatility of the uh, pink line 2022 is gonna disappear and that scale is going to uh, just show between like uh, 700 and zero. And so we will be able to see a better visual representation of what those prices are doing uh, in the past couple of years without that volatility skewing it to look so flat. But this year it is flat. You know, it ranged from just 460 or 470 down uh, a little bit. And then now, as I was saying, at 452 and not really moving. Meanwhile, some of the other prices uh, have dropped a little bit, specifically that Southern Pine on the east side Producers there, suppliers, tried to run up that price a little bit higher than the market could bear a few weeks ago, and now it's correcting down. And so you can see there the second line compared to uh, a month ago, down $24. Eastern Spruce, the same, not quite as much of an increase uh, recently, so the correction is not as bad. And then that plywood, definitely the bottom line, those uh, suppliers, tried to run up that price. Actually, they did increase that price quite a bit by $50 per 1,000 square feet. And they made some sales, but now the customers are pushing back. Counter offers abound. and But uh, compared to a month ago, it's not that bad. It's only down by $4, so that's also quite steady. And here's that very same data presented as a graph. As you can see, within a few weeks, the scale will uh, disappear, the 1400 at the very top there, the plywood. And uh, the up and down since then will be a little bit more easy to see. And some of those prices did fluctuate more than the Western Spruce I was showing you. Uh, for example, the uh, studs uh, dropped at the beginning of this year, lower than the others in relation. 
uh, but didn't rise. Now, what I was saying before about what wood is used for, you know, remodeling, re, uh, rebuilding, uh, DIY projects, but studs really go into new, home, new building. And so that item there might be a good indicator of what to expect coming forward this summer. Okay, and so like I said, normally at this time of year, you know, if there ever is a normal or used to be a normal or ever will be a normal again, we would be chugging along with relatively higher volumes of lumber sales and higher prices. Really speaking, generally, February till about May is when prices would normally go up. So right now we have, in effect, in British Columbia, the fire ban. And that's okay because the mills are well stocked with logs. The mills have been able to stay well stocked with logs for the past couple of years. So feedstock is not an issue. The mills have invested and have very good log supply in their yards all through, um, for the past year at least, and until now. So the seasonal fire ban where uh, they can't bring heavy equipment into the forest, uh, no campfire, like all of that stuff that we're used to, has taken into effect here in BC, and that's okay. That will not affect sawmill manufacturing through the summer. Order files at the mill right now, across the continent, generally speaking, are at about two weeks. So I would consider that a little bit soft for the time of year. If the sawmills know that they have for the next two weeks booked orders for manufacturing. And that's why, as I was saying, the folks up here in the Pacific Northwest are able to hold that Western spruce price flat. They are able to deny counter offers from customers because they still know that they have orders that they're going to be shipping two weeks from now. Okay. If the market is good, it's six weeks and the price is going up. And then at winter time, you know, toward around the holidays, when things really shut down, a sawmill order file might be a couple of days or it might be prompt. There might not even be an order file. So, the latest U.S. housing data, as I did in my last video for February, was up over January and was up over one year ago. So that's encouraging. Single family was up. That's encouraging. But up from somewhat of a low. So it's better, but it's still not as high as we would like to see. There is a lot of sawmills that are curtailed, a lot of sawmills that have taken production offline so that they don't flood the market with too much wood and at least keep the price flat, if, if not able to negotiate some increases. So that's it for now. Check back often. Subscribe here on YouTube so you'll be notified when I make a video, especially the next one that's going to talk about those three uh, different regional commodity prices against each other. Click like here so you'll be notified when I make another awesome update. And if you are interested in the full 500 individual softwood lumber and panel commodity prices that we track every week, that we update every Friday, go on my website. There's a link here in the caption. Fill out the form. You'll get a sample of the list of those prices and what the prices are this week. And you'll get a Word file with the commentary explaining why those prices are changing. This is all what is in the dashboard that my subscribers see every week. What we put on the website, what I put on these little YouTubes is a very, very small selection of the full. Okay, so that's it for now. Thank you for watching and come back again soon.